Hey, this is Lisa from CoochieCoochieCoo.com and today I'm going to show you how to sew a fur pom-pom. These are really fun because they're so soft and I think they look a lot cooler than a classic yarn pom-pom. You can use them for all sorts of projects. Um, there's a thread on the bottom so you can sew them onto a hat or any other project you want at all. They're so easy to make. You do not know, need to know how to use a sewing machine. You can just sew it by hand in just a few minutes. Now let me show you how. To sew your fur pom-pom, you're going to need some fake fur fabric, a bowl or something round that you can trace around, fabric scissors. I suggest you use smaller fabric scissors and not larger ones. A hand sewing needle. Uh, I suggest you use a bigger one as opposed to a smaller one. Polyester thread. Uh, you will want to use a color that matches your fur. I'm using a different color so it'll show up better in the tutorial pen to trace around your bowl, and some polyfill stuffing to fill your pom-pom with. This bowl here is, has a, um, a diameter of 5 inches, or about 13 centimeters, and using this I made a pom-pom like this. So you can see um, it's like this, it's about halfway through. So if you like this size of pom-pom, you can use about a five, uh, five inch bowl or 13 centimeters. Okay, let's look at our faux fur fabric just for a moment. Now, because it's furry, it has a nap. This is the direction that the fur goes in. It's kind of like when you're petting a cat, that you always pet it in one direction. If you go against it, it's not going to feel good. So we have to be really careful of the direction of our nap. Now, the fake fur fabric is actually a knit fabric. You can see that on the back that there are the knit uh, fibers. This is the base fabric for the fur. Now, what I suggest you do when you start is figure out what direction the nap goes in. Right now, my nap goes downwards. So I'm going to flip over on the other side with my pen or marker or whatever you want to use. Just make a little arrow, draw a little arrow that goes in the direction of the nap. That way you'll know um, how to cut your fabric when you need to. So now you can see that I've put my fabric, I have the arrow going down. Actually, when you do a fur pom-pom, it's actually not really that important um, what direction it goes in because we're just going to do a circle. So take your bowl or whether, whatever object you're going to use to trace around and line it up on the back of your fabric. Then. Take your pen or marker or whatever it is that you're using and just trace around your pen, uh, around your bowl, I mean. Okay, so now I have my fabric ready to cut. We're going to keep the back part up, the furry part down. Okay, now you're gonna take your scissors. This is why I suggested using smaller fabric scissors and not larger shears that you would use normally. Now what you're going to do is just cut a little bit at a time. Stick the edge of the shears underneath the fabric, but make sure that you're not cutting the actual long fur underneath. So you're going to go like this all around, take, making little cuts as you go around. Just go little by little, kind of slip the scissors underneath the nap, underneath the fur. You'll feel a little bit with your scissors as it slips underneath. So here you can see there's this furriness that's coming out beyond my cut. And this is because I'm cutting in this way. I'm slipping the scissors underneath without cutting the long hair. So you're going to go this way all the way around. So now you can see we've got our circle of fake fur fabric. You can see here is the direction of the nap and down here at the bottom there is the hair that is still going over the edge and this is because we cut in that way. At the top we don't have anything going over the edge because um, that's where the fur comes from. Now there might be little bits that come off that were um, actually from the parts of the fabric above here where we cut off. So just kind of wipe those away. In any case, when you're sewing a faux fur uh, pom-pom, it's not really that important. They'll just go away on their own. 
Now, thread your needle with a nice long piece of polyester thread. I really suggest you use polyester because cotton can snap. Um, notice I've used a double strand. I just did a really long strand, put it in, um, brought together the two ends and tied a knot. This way it's extra strong and it will be um, able to withstand the gathering that we're going to do in a moment. So take your circle. We're going to start at one edge. What we're going to do is sew a basting stitch or just a regular running stitch all around the edge of our circle. So start here, see, just wherever on the edge. Sew really close to the edge, pull the thread through. Now again, normally you would be using a color that matches your thread. I'm using red because this way it'll, you can see it in the video. Now don't pull all the way through. Leave a bit of a tail and you'll see why in a little bit. But just continue, oops, just continue sewing your running stitch all the way around the edge of your circle. Try not to catch the fur underneath. Try and get superficially, like on the surface here, without catching the actual fur underneath. You can do quite a few stitches at once and then pull through. Just make sure that you don't pull the end here all the way through. So now you can see that I've worked my running stitch right back to where the original end of the thread is. So I pull through. All right, now I've made an entire circuit around the edge of my circle. What we're going to do is start pulling gently these threads and you'll see that it starts to gather up. In this case, it's easier to put it on the table or on your surface that you have and just start pulling a little bit. I like to do one side and the other side and you'll see that it starts making like a sort of um, cup in a way, like a little bowl. At this point, we're going to put some stuffing in here. You don't really need a lot. I'm gonna start with this amount of stuffing. So I'm just gonna pop it right in and I'm going to continue pulling. So notice I kept the needle on that thread there. That's because I'm going to have to use it afterwards as well. So I'm pulling here and you can see that this opening is almost closed. You can see where the blue pen is there. Um, all right, I'm not gonna pull too much more because it probably won't be able to gather that much more. So um, be careful when you're pulling not to pull too hard because you don't want your thread to snap and this is why I used polyester thread and not cotton and also a double strand. At this point, we're going to knot these two threads. So try and keep it closed while you do that. So kind of pull it shut again as much as you can. This is a little tricky. I mean, just do the best you can. Okay, here, I'll put it down again. So if you knot it, you can kind of pull it tight a little bit more. Okay, you can see I'm pulling it tight there. Okay, kind of hold it down with your thumb. This is like when you're wrapping gifts or something, putting ribbon on gifts and you have to hold it down while you make your bows. It's the same sort of thing. So. It's easier if you have somebody to hold down the knot, the first knot, but if not, just put your finger or something there. And okay, do your second part of the knot. All right, so now I've got my little pom-pom. Now, chances are it's not going to be perfectly closed. Like here, um, you can see the blue pen and it's not all pulled together perfectly. So at this point, what I do is I take the needle, which still has a thread on it, and I go back and forth. So the opening is here. Let's pull some of this fur out of the way. So the opening is here where you can kind of see through to the stuffing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and forth a couple times and back and forth here a couple times. And that's just going to close it up. So I just grab a little bit of the fur fabric over on this side here. And then I go get it, pick it up over here on the other side and I pull right through. This is why I'm using red thread so you can actually see it. So I'm pulling right through and then I managed to scrunch it up a little bit more. If I want, I can do it again just to make it a little bit stronger. Oops. Okay. Now I've gone this way. Now I'm gonna go up and down. So I'm gonna just turn the whole thing like this 
and then catch the edge here. Let's see. And then get the other edge over here. So it's going across the needle here. You can sort of see it. Okay, pull it across. And again, I managed to scrunch it up. I'm going to do it again just to make it a little stronger. There we go. Pull it through. And there we go. Uh, it's pulled nice and tight now. So again, I still have my two threads here and I'm going to knot again. I'm going to do another double knot. At this point though, it's easier to hold it together. So I'm just going to put it down on my surface and tie another double knot. All right, and there we have our nice fur pom-pom. If you want, if you have um, fabric fur that is very furry, it's got a long nap, you can actually use a comb and brush it. I like to just kind of shake mine out a little bit and it, it looks nice and fluffy like that. Now at this point, you can either cut your thread or you can use it and sew it onto your project, whatever it is. Um, so in this case, I have my needle and I'm just going to sew it on to the end of a Santa hat, which I will show you in my next tutorial. See you then.